We all know earthworms from biology class, right? Teachers talking about their anatomy, internal organs and how similar everything is to the human body. Maybe we were even able to dissect a worm to take a look inside. But let's be honest, we don't remember that much anymore. I mean, the earthworm was dead and not very spectacular anyway. Today, we are trying to change that by observing this tiny aquatic worm from the genus Pristina that is closely related to the earthworm we know. Although only a few millimeters in size, its transparent body allows us to study all the internal organs in a living animal. We are going to take a look at its contracting blood vessels that supply the animal with oxygen. Furthermore, we will see the metanephridium, a primitive kidney which is part of its excretion system. And last but not least, I will show you the digestive tract which is surprisingly similar to our gut. These worms are made up of repeating segments that all contain the same basal organs. In this illustration, we can see two of these segments which are separated by a membrane. The main characteristics that can be observed are the hair-like bristles, the intestine running through the center of each segment, the blood vessels and the excretion system with the ciliated entrance that is called nephrostome. There is also a segmental ganglion running through the entire worm but it's hard to visualize in the living animal. Let's observe the blood vessels now. So we are looking at the posterior part of the worm at 250x magnification in differential interference contrast. We see the membrane that separates each segment of the worm and we are also able to observe the blood vessel contracting. These worms have two main blood vessels. The dorsal one, which we are observing here most of the time, is the one contracting and pushing the red blood to the anterior part of its body. Just like in more developed animals, hemoglobin is binding and transporting the oxygen. Therefore the fluid in the blood vessel has a slight red color. We are lacking red blood cells however, so there are no erythrocytes like in more developed animals, just soluble hemoglobin. I have now shifted the focus a bit and we can see the second blood vessel which is opposite of the dorsal one. The vessel is slightly shifted to the side due to the pressure of the cover glass on the worm. We can see that this vessel is not contracting and we can also see additional small blood vessels emerging from the main vessel that supply the rest of the body with oxygen. I fast forwarded the clip a bit so now we have a good impression of the contraction of the blood vessels. Now we are getting a bit closer. We are at 600x magnification and inside one of the worm segments. The ciliated structure in the center of the frame is actually the nephrostome. It looks like a small ciliate from the genus Vorticella, but is actually part of the metanephridium, the primitive kidney of the worm. One of the main functions of our kidney is waste removal. Most of the waste products have already been filtered through the membrane of the blood vessel in this worm. The metanephridium will hold back any remaining soluble products that are of use for the worm. To do its job properly, the metanephridium is made up of long loops that enhance the surface area and improve resorption of useful molecules. We can see the long tubes here and also the fluid that is running through it as it is pushed in by the ciliated nephrostome. There is some sort of loose membrane in these tubes that is moving and allows us to actually visualize the fluid running through it. We are now gonna move to the digestive tract. We are at 250x magnification again to provide an overview. In the center we can see the digestive tract with small yellowish brownish droplets on the borders of it. These droplets consist of lipids and glycogen which are stored in special cells and function similar to our liver. On the outside of the worm we can also observe numerous ciliates from the genus Vorticella that attach to the skin of the worm. Because hey, why not, the worm does not seem to care anyway. Although it looks as if the digestive tract is contracting, it is actually caused by the dorsal blood vessel which is attached to it. Back at 600x magnification. 
the digestive tract is actually full of ciliated epithelial cells. Maybe you remember the microvilli from biology class that are part of our gut and increase the surface area for absorption. The cilia in this worm have the exact same function. The cilia increase the surface area and improve absorption of glucose, amino acids and minerals. So we can now imagine what is actually going on in our own gut. Really nothing is static there. We have constant movement through the microvilli, through the digestive fluids. I think it is quite impressive to see these cilia move in real time. Thank you for watching and feel free to ask questions and share your thoughts in the comment section below.